Angeles Patty. Who I was. And you know why I didn't know who I was? Because when I was a little girl, my 
my own mother abused me. That who was supposed to protect me, that who was supposed to love me, she abused me, she misused me. It was so bad that she even went to jail over it. My father was a drug dealer, so he was hardly ever home. And we couldn't tell him that we were being abused because he was hardly ever home. So the threat that my mom had on my life was, if you tell your father when he leaves, I'm gonna beat you even more. So at the age of 15 years old, uh, you know, my, like I stated, my dad was a drug dealer. They came into my house and they murdered my father in front of everybody. Yeah. I had major identity issues. I thought love was abuse. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought you slap me, you hit me, you, you, you mistreat me, you love me. Because that's what was sown into me from a little girl. So at the age of 15, I got into a very abusive relationship. By the age of 16, I was already pregnant with my first child. I was in a room all by myself while my friends were graduating high school. I was with a big belly and I was, I was pregnant and rejected and forgotten. In that room, my father had just got murdered. So I felt, I remember looking outside that window and, and, and crying out, to my father, because I didn't even know there was a God, and saying, I, I really miss you, and just talking to my father. But you know, all along, my heavenly father yeah. was listening to me. Yeah. All along, my heavenly father had a purpose and yes. a plan for my life. By the age of 18, I was tired of being in that abusive relationship. I wanted to have my own thing. I wanted to be, I, uh, uh, what do you call those? I wanted to be independent. I wanted to say, no more will you hit me, no more will you cheat on me, so I went to go be a stripper. My life got even darker after that. <laughs> you know, all kinds of doors started opening after that. I became a, I became a, a, an alcoholic, started going to jail various times because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't handle my alcohol problem. You know, and at, at the age of, of 20, Three years old, one of my friends that was a former stripper, God saved her life. Amen. And so it is so important that we share Christ with others yes. because she shared the gospel with me. Amen. And I believed it because her life spoke it on. Yes. You see, we can't just say something to someone and live a different way. Yes. She had this joy inside of her. She was saying how the greens, how the grass was so green and how the sky was so blue. And I was like, I don't see that. You must be high. What you got? Share some of that marijuana with me. Because I didn't have the joy. I couldn't see life beautiful how she saw it. But I wanted that. I wanted that. And so at 23 years old, I gave my life to Christ. I remember going to a women's conference just like you guys. And I remember two months into me being a Christian, I went to a women's conference and the lady said, write down what you believe God is calling you to be. Wow. Where he is trying to send you out to. I had no idea. And all of a sudden in my spirit, man, I heard evangelist. Amen. And I wish I could tell you guys that I stepped into that right there and then. <laughs>
to church for? All y'all going to do is judge me. I'm going to come going through a divorce. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a single mother now with two kids. Why am I going to? All y'all going to do is judge me. Why? Because I saw myself that way. Yeah. You see, sometimes we yeah, think yeah, people yeah. are judging us. Sometimes we're offended, and we are not even offended because they told us that. We're a, 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 because they said anything to us. They're really trying to love on us, but because we're so messed up in our thinking, we keep thinking that people are judging us. We keep thinking all this stuff, and God's like, you're just trying to love you. When are you going to receive my love? When are you going to receive everything that I have for you? When are you going to open up your heart truly and let it go from your mind to your heart? When are you going to allow me to do heart surgery on you instead of you continually being in your mind? You see, the mind is the battlefield. And I had a decision to make when my pastor told me, we're not going to judge you. We're just going to love you. We miss you. Come back. Yeah. And I remember stepping into that into that uh, church. And I remember everybody just loving on me. And I was like trying to find a reason for somebody to judge me so I can go off and, and defend my offense that I had made up in my mind. Wow. Ooh, wow. That I had made up in my mind. Yeah. Some of you are offended right now at some yeah. people in the church. Yeah. And it's keeping you from your purpose. It's keeping you from your destiny. It's keeping you from God sending you out and being everything that God has called you to be. You see, we're not just there for the people. We're there for God. We're there for God. We're there so we can fulfill our God-given purpose. And because I was obedient and I, and I continued to allow God. See, some of you, we're in all, all of us are in a process, but some of us have been paralyzed in that one process, and we haven't, we haven't gone to the next step of the process. And God is saying, I want to finish what I started in you. Will you let me finish what I started in you? You see, man may fail you, but God will never fail you. And God is faithful. He's not like mad that he should lie, but he shows you when he speaks to you, it's going to happen. But you got to believe him. you got to believe him. And so here, you know, uh, so then Vashti gets kicked out because she's thinking she's all that in a bag of chips. You see, God starts opening doors for us, and all of a sudden we think we all that, and we have all that in a bag of chips, and we start missing it. We start missing it because we start making it about us yeah. instead of making it about God yeah. and his kingdom and his glory. Yeah. And so we have to continually remind ourselves that we need to stay broken. We need to yeah. stay shattered yeah. before God. Yeah. Because in order for God to take us high, we must be low. You yeah. see, we serve an upside down kingdom. You see, the world will sit and tell you that you gotta make it about you, that you gotta open these doors, that you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta do that. You see, but in the in the kingdom of God, it's opposite. In the kingdom of God, if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, He will exalt you in His kingdom. You see, in the kingdom of God, if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, then everything that you need will be added on to you. You see, some of us are trying to self-promote ourselves. And God is saying, you ain't got to do all that. You just spend some time with me, and I'll do for you what you couldn't do in 15 days. I can do it for you in one day. You see, it's never by our might and our strength. It is always by his spirit. We got to die daily so that he can live and reign and rule through us. You see, the Bible says in John, the, the Bible says that we are the vine. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, that he is the vine. Yeah, we are the branches. Yeah, and without yeah. him, we can produce nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we got to stay connected to the vine in order for us to see much fruit in our lives. Amen. You see, I wasn't able to see fruit, even though God had called me an evangelist in 2003. I didn't see the fruit of being an evangelist yeah. until 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 I was 30 years old. Until I finally surrendered all of my life to him and said, no longer will I make it about me. I will make it about you. No longer will I live for my own desires, but may your desires transcend yeah. through me, Lord. 
You know, the Bible says, delight yourself yeah. in the Lord, and he will yeah. give you the desires of your heart. You see, some of us twist that scripture up yeah. because it's like, well, the desires of my heart. Yeah. No, no, no. Your desires begin to become his desires. And then we see his desires transcend in our lives. And then we were happy about it because our heart has become the his heart. And we're one with him. And that's where we find joy. That's where we find the abundant life that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us to live. That's where true joy comes in from. When we take ourselves out of the equation and we say, Lord, you rule, you reign through me. Because the truth is, is that God knows how to make you happier than you can make yourself happier. You know, the Bible says that in, in, in Isaiah 55, verse 8, that his ways and his thoughts are way higher than ours. Right, right. So some of us need to give up our plan B yeah, and we yeah. need to stick to his plan A. Oh, yeah. We need to stop tripping us whenever our plan A doesn't look the way that we thought of picking up yeah. our plan B. Right. You see, we need, we need to surrender that plan B tonight, today. Right. We need to surrender it at the yeah. altar and say, yeah. Lord, you know what? I'm going to surrender this plan B yes. to you. And I'm going to go with your plan A no matter how it looks, no matter the detours, no matter the, the, the hell. You know, because I always tell people that the anointing, that, that, that salvation is free, but the anointing will cost you everything. Yes. The anointing will cost you your flesh. Yes. It will cost you everything. You see, a lot of people want the glory, but they don't want to go through the storm. If I were to tell you some of the things yeah. that I've been through to get to where I'm at, you, you, you'll throw it back at me and say, you can have it, Patty. You can have it. You know, because there's some things that we go through, some lonely times. You know, some times where we feel rejected. Some times where we feel overlooked. Some times that we feel we aren't enough. You know, we go through all those things. I was just shaking right there before I came up here. I was like, Lord, help me. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes we gotta do it afraid. That's right. Yeah. We gotta do it afraid. Because you know the Bible says that God has not given us Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind, power, and love. You see, and when we when we're obedient to God, his grace and his power and his anointing will show up in our lives. God is just waiting for a yes. God is just waiting for you to take that step. And when you take that step, he will meet you there. Yeah. But some of us are in our heads, or we think we got to bring the abilities. No. Ooh. You ain't got to bring nothing. Come you on. just come oh, with your obedience, God. with your surrender, with yeah. your preparation. And guess what? The Bible says be prepared in and out of season. Yeah. I just yeah. told y'all right now, he switched it up on me. Yes. Yeah. And so sometimes, sometimes he'll switch it up on you, and you still got to be ready. Yeah. You still got to be ready to preach the gospel. Because it's never about me. It's always about him and what he wants to do. And so, you know, the Bible says in, in, in uh, Esther chapter 2 how, how Esther had to go through a beauty buying process yes. for seven months. You know, the number seven re uh, represents the number of completion. Yes, right. You see, we cannot birth anything prematurely. Come on here. Because if you try to birth anything prematurely, yeah. It's not going to work. There's not going to be no fruit. It's going to die on you. And so we got to wait on the timing of the Lord. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah that those who wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. There is power in waiting. There is power in waiting and not creating Ishmael's in our lives. There is power in allowing God to be God so that we can produce the, 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 the true promise of God. And a lot of us don't want to wait because we live in a microwave society. We live in a, a, a microwave society that says Burger King have a true way. No, he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And it's his way or no way. You know, it's the way he wants to paint the picture. You know, that there's the scripture in Romans that talk about how can the how can the clay tell the potter how to mold it? How can we tell him how to mold it? And this is why it's so important not to compare our race to anybody else's race. This is why it's so important for us not to look to the right or 
to the left or not to the back, but to keep your eyes steadfast and focused on Jesus. Because that's another reason why we missed it. Because we sitting there looking to the right, we sitting there looking, that's what happened to Vashti. Vashti was looking all around except at her king. Vashti was like, I got this. I, I'm in the room now. I'm in, I'm in the glory now. I, I, I'm already accepted. Yeah, you are accepted. Yeah, you are the, yeah, you are all that in the bag of chips. But remember that it's only through his grace. Yeah. Remember that it's only because of his mercy, because of his compassion. You see, he could have kept us in our mess if he really wanted to. Because the Bible says in Romans that he has mercy on whoever he chooses to have mercy on. Yeah. So we can't ever take his yeah. grace and his mercy and his compassion for granted. Yeah. We can't because he could have left us there. Yeah. I have friends that are still stripping. I have friends that are still lost. I have friends that are still homeless. I have friends that are still... So every day when I see that, I'm thankful. I'm grateful that God chose me. I'm grateful that I can stand up here and preach his word. I'm grateful I stay humble before God. Because I'm like, boy, you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to look my way. You chose to look my way. You chose to have mercy on me. You chose to have a purpose for my life. You chose to anoint me. You, you did. I had nothing to do with it. You did. So everything goes points back to him. And so, you know, Esther starts going through this beautifying process. And you know, some of the, some, some of the things that happen in the natural is because God is trying to do something in the spiritual, yeah. in our lives. Yeah. Pay attention to the dots that he's connecting in the natural because in the supernatural, you'll begin to see it. You'll begin to see the things come together. You see, all of us, we just think we're here at a conference. We just think, oh, I'm just here, you know, but God has a plan. He has a purpose. You might not see it right now, but later on, you're going to see it and be like, oh, now I know why I have to be there. Now I know why I have to hear this yeah, message. That's right, that's right. You know, there was times that I didn't understand certain things, but then I look back and I'm like, oh, okay, God, that's why you connected me to that person. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I met Dr. Ash one time. <laughs> one time I met her. And we only talked for a little bit at a youth conference that I was speaking at. And we, and we, we connected through Facebook. We didn't really talk, none of that, but look. God knew that I was going to be standing here today. That's she right. was going to have her that's first right. conference. And that's why we can never discredit anybody. Yeah. We can that's never right. act like Vashti and be like, I don't need that person in my life. Right. No, we need yeah. each other. Yeah. We are the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we yeah. need each other. So we are here. The Bible says that God directs the steps of the righteous. Yeah. 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 So he directed your steps here today because there's a reason why he wants you to hear this message. Yeah. But it's up to you if you're going to receive this message in your heart. If you're going to let it bear fruit in your life. It's up to you because the moment you walk out of these doors, that's when the true test comes. The moment you walk out of these doors, when you go through the trials and the tribulations and the, and the testing and the temptation and all that crazy stuff, you got to remind yourself, hey, I'm in a process. Because you know, the devil is out to kill, to steal, and to destroy us. God has come that you may have life and have it to the fullest. So one of my one of my processes was, and the devil knows your weaknesses too, because he's been he's been studying you for a long time. He knows your triggers. He knows everything. Just like God knows everything about you, the devil does too, and he knows how to trip you up. He knows what to do with you. I was single for almost eight years until God sent me my husband. Let me tell y'all, when I was single, I was still walking in my purpose, but that devil. Man, he was sending all kinds of guys to try to destroy me. There was one, there was one that would not give up. He was for almost three years, would not give up. Told the whole church I was gonna be his wife. I said, devil, you're a liar. And he told me, God told me, God told me, if you get with him, this is gonna be your future. I said, I don't know.
it's important for us to be image bearers of Christ. It's important for us to represent Jesus Christ the way that we're supposed to represent him. To not make it about us anymore. To be like, okay, yeah, you gave me an attitude, but I'm going to let that slide. I'm going to still love you. I'm going to still forgive you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to love the hell out of you even more. You know? Because you know what? The, the truth is, the, the, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, that those that have a pure heart will see God. You see, that's why the devil's trying to pollute your heart. So that you won't see God operating and working in your life. You see, we've got to protect our heart. You know, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, that above all else, guard your heart, for out of it flows out the issues of life. You see, you got issues in life, you ain't guarding your heart. You gotta guard your heart, you gotta protect your heart. You gotta keep that heart pure. You gotta be quick to forgive. You gotta be quick to love. You gotta be quick to, to be like Christ. You gotta be quick, I know it hurts sometimes. I know it hurts, believe me, I know it hurts. Ministry hurts. Their ministry will hurt you. You, you, you thought you were hurt in the world? Oh, you will be hurt in ministry oh, on some whole nother levels because you, you think that everybody's just love. You think that everything is just peaches and cream. And you begin to see some stuff in your life. But it's a test for you to keep your heart pure. It's a test for you to go to the next level. It's a test for you, for God to see, okay, are you ready for that next level? You see, I remember back in 2010, I'm telling y'all, God's switching on my whole message. I remember back in 2000, no, it was 13. When I first came to Get Rap Church, and me and Pastor Tommy are at, um, I love this woman right here, man. She could preach. She could preach, boy. Dr. Ash, she could preach. <laughs> but um, in, in 2013, you know, I, I remember I was just my pastor said, you're going to lead the women's. Oh, okay. So I was, I was in a, uh, I was leading the women's Bible studies. There was only 10 ladies there. Uh -huh. And after the women's Bible study, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to y'all about a process here. Come on. So you can understand some things. I heard most of them were talking about me. 